So is this you, a yarn lover like me? I love crocheting. I used to knit and now I'm addicted to crocheting. One thing that I have to realize is that I need to stop every once in a while and I need to move. Uh, so I'm a chiropractor and I am a movement mobility specialist who likes to use yarn and knit and crochet and pop this here, but have noticed that if you keep doing it repetitively, which many of us probably can attest to, you will start to feel some aches and pain in repetitive strains. So uh, as a mobility specialist, I know what to do and I'm gonna teach you guys. So we're gonna do something called controlled articular rotations. And these are active rotational movements of your joints to their end range. The key here is there's active, they're to your end range, and they are done slowly. It's an active exploration of what range of motion your joints can do. So follow along. I want you to create some tension when you do them. So a little bit of tightness. So if you think if you're gripping your hook, how tight. We want to create that, that little bit of tightness when we do these and then push our joints to their end ranges and limits, okay? So put your yarn down, put your coffee down. I'm gonna take my sweater off so that you guys can see. And we're gonna go through this little mobility for yarn lovers. Honestly, if you like to sit and needlework or anything else, this is also good for you. Right, so I want you to take a breath in. You're gonna trap the air just in your lower abdomen. You're gonna create some fists which is gonna help us create a little bit of tension. I'm tightening the rest of my body. This is called a radiation when I, when I put the tension through my whole body, just a little bit, maybe 10, 20%. So I'm gonna create that tension, take that breath in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by moving my neck. Everybody gets neck soreness, stiffness. We're gonna tuck that chin. I'm gonna slowly flex my chin down to its end range. I'm going to then rotate, so my chin is going to draw along my collarbone. When I get to that limit, I'm then going to drop my ear to the shoulder, to that left shoulder. Then I'm going to start to go backwards. We're actively reaching for the end range. So I'm finding that stretch on that opening side here, and I'm trying to avoid any pain. So you find a pinching, sharp point, you can either skip it. If you know that it's not a problem, it's just stiffness, you can work on it slowly, but don't drive into it, just butt up against it. I'm gonna show you from the side, so we're gonna go the other way. So we're gonna take that breath in, create fist, I'm gonna tuck my chin, I'm gonna slowly try to segment and flex and bend my chin forward. Totally feel stretch on that opening side on the back here. Then I'm gonna draw my chin along the collarbone to the right, Drop my ear to my shoulder when I get to that limit. Extending my neck. Yes, you can extend your neck. If there's a reason you can't, then listen to your doctor. But if you have a normal neck, you can extend your neck and you should. Any motion you stop doing, your brain will think you don't need it and it will start to lose it. Good. So I did two of those. Try doing more of those. You can do that seated, you can just Cross your arms and create tension and you can do it anyway. We're now going to do our spine. So the same kind of exercise we just did for our neck, we're going to do for our whole spine, the rest of our, our back here. And I'm going to cross my arms over. I'm going to create a wider stance, grab the ground with my feet, and I'm going to create that tension with my body squeezing my arms and grabbing my feet and my legs tight. So I'm going to take a breath in. I'm going to curl crunch my spine down, totally feel stretch on that lower back side. Then I'm gonna rotate, so I'm gonna rotate to the left, elbows are leading, when you get to your limit of rotation, drop your left, sh your left shoulder back to the side and back, extending. Remember, this is slow and we're seeking out the end range. Rotating over to the right, the elbows are going to come towards that right hip, all the way around. Another thing to tell you is that we're trying to minimize motion in other areas. So I'm moving my spine. I really don't want my hips swaying all over the place. 
that is not going to help. That's just hip motion, which is also good. We want our hips to move, but we don't want it when we're trying to move our spine. So I'm going to curl, crunch. I'll show you from the side so you guys can see. I'm going to rotate to the right. When I reach my limit, drop my right shoulder to the side, then extending. Keep your bum tight as you try to extend and try to stop yourself from the cheating. Everyone will cheat at the beginning. Over to the other side, coming down and around. That's your spine. So we now just moved our whole neck, our spine. We're gonna do now our arms because the other thing that we use when we're we're knitting or crocheting is our arms and our wrists and things like that. And so everyone complains about these wrists and forearm kind of tightness, tension. We're gonna start with our shoulders. I'm gonna get you to do your shoulder carves, the circles for your shoulders, with both of them at the same time. But we are going to go slow and controlled. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have our palms facing up. We're gonna take that breath in, trap the air in our lower abdomen. We're going to slowly start to flex. Elbows are locked and straight. We're bringing our arms up and we're gonna come all the way up to what our limit is. When our limit, we reach our limit, we start to then rotate into the socket. So my hands turn inwards and then I start to reach back. This is where all the good stuff is. I can feel in between my shoulder blades, keep reaching back. Remember, active exploration of your end range. And back. We're gonna then reverse. So my hands, the back of my hands are on my legs. I'm gonna go straight back to my limit, making sure we're creating this tension, 20%. Open the palms up towards the ceiling, coming back around all the way. We come down through our palms. Good. I'm going to show you from the back so you guys can see. So palms are facing up. I'm going to do another rep. Coming all the way up when you reach your limit. Internally rotate. Rotate those hands inward and reach and squeeze those shoulder blades. Keep reaching back. We're going to reverse all the way, coming back around, maintaining that tension and that active exploration of your end range. So coming backwards, we're reversing. You can also do that with one arm at a time. I'm just doing it simply so we get both things moving. Okay, we're going to do our scapula or shoulder blades. A lot of people forget about the shoulder blades, especially when you're sitting hunched, your shoulder blade gets stuck in the hunched for so we want to try and create some motion there my hands are going to be on the side of my legs my arms are going to be straight i'm going to trap that air in the lower abdomen and i'm going to hike my shoulders up then i'm going to try and make them go forward while keeping my hands on my legs drop them down coming back up forward down now the difference in this and a lot of people have heard of shoulder shrugs and circles and things like that is the tension, we're maintaining tightness, we're being deliberate with our movement, and we're trying to push to our end range. So I'm gonna show you from the side. So I'm gonna come up, forward, down, back. And you can see I'm trying to minimize motion in other areas. Up. We're gonna freeze there, we're gonna reverse. So I'm gonna go back, Drop the shoulders down, forward, up, back, down. Do a few reps, get that going. So it's it's four points, so up, forward, down, back, and then we reverse. So we just wanna try and hit those points, but try to make it a bit somewhat circular, but really more smooth in that motion, okay? We're gonna do our elbows. <coughs> our elbows, super important. Down here with our, our yarn love, we get really tight. So palms facing out. One, also learn how to grip your, your tools a little bit lighter rather than tighter. And that can actually really help a lot with repetitive overuse. So palms out, we're going to be bending the elbows now. So the, the from the elbow up, this is gonna be fixed and not moving. 
We're going to take a breath in. So I'm coming up. As I'm coming up, I'm trying to rotate my hands so that you can see my thumbs are facing out. So as I come up, I do that. When I get to the top of my flexion, so my bending of my elbow, I'm going to rotate. And then as I come down, I'm going to keep rotating down. And remember, my shoulders are fixed. I'm going to palms all the way out. And as we come up, I'm coming up. Palms inward towards each other, thumbs inward. Down. Stop at the bottom here. End of your extension or your straightening of your arm. We're going to reverse. So we're now going to go back the same way we came just to mess with your brain. And then we're gonna rotate at the top, go all the way up, really actively opening those palms. Good, inwards, and coming up. Remember, active, slow, controlled expiration of your end range. You should feel that stretch and tightness, loosening at the end. Good. That is our elbow run. We're now gonna do our wrist, the last one. I'm gonna do wrists together, but you can also do one at a time. Sometimes people find it a little bit hard to do both at the same time. We're gonna try to actively move this, and then I'm gonna show you a couple of the stretches, okay? So, wrists, we're here. I'm gonna pin those elbows. I do not want this forearm to move, I want the wrist to move. So think about this as a fixed object not moving. So I'm holding here. I'm going to be holding my hands tight with a little bit of tension, maybe 20%. I'm going to straighten or extend down to my limit. I'm gonna bring my hands in towards each other while trying to stay somewhat straight, and then I'm coming up. When I reach the limit here, I'm gonna go outwards and go down. Now, your wrists may be different coming up Flexing to your limit and down. If you find this very hard in air, what I would suggest, take a ball of yarn, I know you all have them, and just grab it a little bit. And sometimes people find they can get a little bit more. We're just holding that yarn gently, range of motion. You should be able to get full wrist range of motion. And we reverse. So we're coming out, flexing or bending forward, inwards. Don't let that forearm rotate or elbow do the work. Straightening all the way down, reach down for your end range. Super slow, controlled. That's it. That one, your wrist one, wrist cars, do more, do lots, get some motion and, and some blood flow in there. The only way to maintain the health of your joints is to move them. They need nutrition pumping in and out blood flow. And if you don't move them, or if you repetitively just move them in one way, then you're missing all this backside. The other thing is that you lose range of motion. Okay, so try that. We're gonna do two stretches as well. So we're gonna do a stretch with our arm bent. So we're gonna be like this. And we're going to be here and then what i want you guys to think about is rotating here right so you find your end range of stretch passively push it in i've got my thumb on the inside here because i can create a little bit of purchase like that and then we're just going to hold right now stretching for 10 seconds 20 seconds 30 seconds is good it is not a bad thing it is not going to give you more range. So it depends on your intent. If your intent is to get more tissue range out of your forearm, your your um, area where you use a lot with your, with your yarn, then you may want to hold this for two minutes. Two minutes stretch will create lengthening in that tissue. It takes around two minutes for the fibers to start to let go for the muscle fibers. So we want to hold that there for two full minutes. At the end of your two minutes, you can do a couple little pails or contractions of the tissue you're stretching and rails or contractions of the tissue you're shortening. So what that would mean is I'm gonna maintain this end range stretch hold 
and I'm going to try and push my fingers on my working hand forward, right? So I'm going to ramp that up, but I'm going to, my hand is going to work to keep it there. So I'm going to hold there. This hand is going to block any range, but I'm trying to do that. Okay. And we want to hold that, ramp that up. So maybe 20, 40, 60%. You start to feel that stretch and that movement through your forearm. Hold that. Hold for 10 or 15 seconds. Good. And then we're going to do the second contraction. Second contraction is the back of this hand is trying to reach your back, your forearm. So you're trying to actively push back. What you can do is you have your hand here and then you slowly take it away and just keep it there. And really you can give yourself cues, taps, try to extend, try and bring that hand backwards. This is active. If you're trying to get range, you need to do both to keep the range and relax. And then you'll feel you have a little play, a little bit of movement. That is for our um, forearm, for our flexor um, digitorum uh, profundus. And now we're gonna do the superficialis. So the superficial one, we're gonna straighten our arm and we're gonna go like this, right? And we're gonna feel that in different tissue. It's also gonna work here and it's gonna work through there. If you want to, you can work on the thumb as well itself, but straightening the arm, holding, and then like we did with the other one, slightly rotating because that will stretch your pronators or your ones that rotate your wrist inwards, your muscles, and that will help you as well. Same thing, hold for two minutes if you're wanting to lengthen, and then you do the same two contractions. That's your form. After doing those stretches, one thing to do is actually to do a few more of these wrist and elbow cars because you'll feel there's a little more space. And that is my mobility for yarn lovers. Then sit back down, grab your yarn, and enjoy.